Thank Ray, you, how are you? Chill, how are you? Good to meet you. Super good to meet you, man. How you doing? Thank you so much for doing this. I appreciate oh, no. it. Thank you so much for your time. I'm a huge cinephile. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of World War II films. I'm so glad. I am so glad to interview you because this movie absolutely works. But it must have been a gamble for you as an actor just to take yeah. part in this because, you know, you, it's hard sometimes to make a really effective World War II film. Can yeah. you just talk talk about taking that gamble Did you yeah. and how much you believed in Shane, I guess, from the get-go? I'm, I'm assuming. Shane, yeah. Uh, first of all, uh, you, you get uh, Richard Switzer, who, the producer, who, co who contacts you and is like, we have this part. Um, Shane is directing it and then you look into it and like, oh my God, is this for real? Because um, it was not complicated for me to coach the role, do it, or even like, it was just amazing for me to get this role. I mean, waiting for 17 years, not because of the, I'm going to have to explain well to you, um, not because of like, uh, I want to play in a war film, what, it's because of what happened to my family. It's, it's very personal. I never had the opportunity to play this here because I, I live in America. I don't live in France, but even France, yeah, I would have played war movies. We known to play to 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 ten ten years, and so when I had the opportunity to do this, um, it was more an homage to my grandmother because she was really involved with the Second World War, um, to crazy places, to like she she did the job of ten men, so. Um, to me, it was like a no-brainer. I, I not only want to be part of this film, but I want to do really well into portraying what she was feeling because the difference between what she experienced and lived is really no different than with Jean Dacan, my character I play. So it sounds weird, but my character is completely based on a woman of my family. Yeah. Was the physicality of the role easy mm. for you to play? Because just from watching the movie, there's a lot of things you do physically and yeah. you're moving. There's so many different different visual setups. Was it exhausting or was it maybe gratifying at the same time to do all of these I things? Was gratifying. Ex exhausting, no, because uh, my life as non-actor, I'm doing Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu for 15 years. So we cheer a little bit. Because in 1944, Jiu-Jitsu did not see the day of light. Uh, Elio Gracie was like working on it until 1951 when he came out. But so I, um, I was like, well, Shane, he was like, don't forget, Shane is a master of saving your life when it comes down to finishing things and making like look great. <laughs> He's amazing. So we like, I'm tied to a chair. What will be the solution? And it was no solution in 1944. You'd be killed. Or if you have your legs and you know Jiu-Jitsu real well, <laughs> yay possibility. So we 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 ended up putting a couple of uh, fight scenes that, guys, they were, they, they were unbelievable. The stuntmen, they were no stuntmen, bro. They were like full-on special forces from Bulgaria. 55-year-old, Scars from head to toe, real deal. Like, my job is to do what you do. Like, ugh. so whatever they were saying, I, I listened to it with everything I got. So you really become physically that person um, because you talk to people who have done that countless times. So it was really real there. I mean, you look at men, I'm 48, but you look at men who've done things. So it's very different. Um, but for me, it was like more like uh, what an opportunity to be able to tell a true story. We have so many of those true stories left and right, and we still don't know about it. Um, I, I believe we talked a lot about the World War II because it was involving everyone. I can point at you, and I'm sure you will. your family somehow was involved. Yeah. That's why we talk about World War II. Uh, Jill, you know, I, I was looking at a whole bunch of your interviews to prepare for this interview, and it, you mentioned long time ago you had four hundred seventy dollars in your in your wallet or in the bank. No English, start, no English. But then also years later, you're also a tra a world traveler who you don't mind going deep into the in the forest where there is unknown and there could be dangerous animals to most people. Are those the same people? Meaning, 
is it because you re you realize you only have one life and you need to live it? Or you mentioned your grandmother, or is it the strength of being raised in such a family that gives you the strength to learn a language with only $470 and then years later with a family of your own, go out into the wilderness with most people wouldn't do what you would do. Yeah. yeah. So. I, I'm all, uh, it's funny because my, uh, all the way to my mom and my sister, they're always like, hey, what are you doing? Um, I always was someone who, what you mentioned happened in Canada for the first time with me. Um, I decided to be one with nature since we bought a, a little cabin home in the forest here in LA. It's an hour and a half away. It's called Idlewild. It's, uh, I'm off grid. I have no humans next to me. So it's really the woods. It's off grid completely. So I learned to be a little bit more close to animals and understand their behavior as much as they can maybe understand mine and become one. I have a, I have a cougar. I know I never talk to anybody on this, but I have a, it's not a pet. It's a, it's, it's, it's a long, far away buddy, not far away, 20 feet. And he would come in front of my house and he would look at me and I look at him. And if he wants, he takes me out. That feeling, I wish everybody to feel. Not because he's scary, because he tells you how small, how meaningless you can be and how important it is to mix and be one with the world. Is a weird sense of peace and calm. You know, I ended up close to an elk and I didn't know, surprised him by walking 15 miles in deep forest. He just stared at me and blink. It was calm. I was calm. This experience makes you realize how small and big and powerful and weak and all. It, it makes you it makes you realize how this world is is really shaped and how much more respect we should give it to. I love Murder Company. I want to mm -hmm. see you in more war films, but selfishly, I want to see you and your family maybe make a documentary on how to properly or how to raise a squirrel and have that squirrel become part of your family. Selfishly, will you ever make that documentary? Because I want to see it. And it is really, it's very, it's really interesting you say that. It's well, been approached a lot left and right because it's not possible. You know what I just did before I sit down with you? I'm going to just tell you what I just did. I'm not going to fake anything. I have my little. Congratulations, my daughter got graduated water. I got yeah. up, I fed a squirrel that went onto my shoulder. And then another cork came to my feet, whose tail was cut off because it was attacked by a raccoon. Diego, his name is. And he survived. And so I fed that one. Then I had my bird on my shoulder that I brought, an African girl who speaks like you and I, it's funny, brought, brought to her outside world, while rabbits roaming around, crows, and hundreds of different finch. That's just in my yard. We've been here for two years. The entire neighborhood wants to wants to see wildlife. They come here. It's phenomenal. It's crazy. I don't know what's happening. My wife will tell you, no, it's something weird with you. And that's what she will say. Um, dogs in the neighborhood come here. I don't know them. They come here. They come here. They force their owners to come here. There's something weird. I, I, I don't know if it's my being who is receptive to their uh the animal kingdom I, it's been four or five years it's been crazy bro i don't know what to say it's every animal one comes sometimes i feel am i sick are they smelling something it's really like that um i, I don't know why but the love for animal and then it's a story on his own it, it <laughs> is a guy that should have died and gave a second chance and now not only he changes the ways of how they're behaving outside because squirrel needs to get out. They have a circle. They stay one generation, two, that's six months, and then they need to leave because they get kicked out. This one doesn't do that. So it's changing. They're becoming more human, if I may. It's really interesting. If you were here, yeah. you would say, bro, this is crazy that I thought. Yeah. Jill, I think it's obvious to say that you're acting deepened when you had your a family. I'm sure that's obvious. But then also when you when you brought all of these other animals into your own family, do you see like, for example, your performance in murder company or the films that you've done within the last couple of years deepen? Do you notice this yourself? Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> There's a scene in the film where now we're shooting this. So I'm here. We're shooting this beautiful, vast plane. It's great. And it's crazy 
nightmare war battle. And then for a moment, they have to shoot Will and Joe because there's a specific scene with them. So I have an hour or so. I went up, met a very interesting man that thought I was injured because I was all cut from the makeup. He didn't speak a word of English. Full of animals everywhere. And I spent an hour and a half taking care of cows. Why shooting? No one knows they're on the... I have the videos, of course. Um, I, I, I was attracted. I need to go up there. And I don't know why. Horses, cows. It was, it was this entire livestock that he has. It, it was a small man that never seen a foreign person there. Bleeding. <laughs> it's crazy. But I love that. I love to, to go everywhere I go. I must know how people live. Otherwise, I don't go. I don't go. I went to Bora Bora. I spent three days looking for someone who disappeared. Go. You're the rich one who come here for vacation. No, I don't want that. It's who I am. I, I'm, 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 my daughter is just like that. We, we too much empath. So whatever comes around you, you need to save in a way. And that could be a problem sometimes. But I live that life. You said I, I live every day because I will end up dying once. Yeah. I think sometimes I think it takes too much strength and perseverance to be to be an empath. I, I wish I was like, you know, I'm just saying that. I have friends of mine telling me like I saw a woman struggling with with some stuff and 99 for 99 percent, I would have everybody is his life. And because of you, I turned around and I said, excuse me, do you want to help? I didn't say finish help. She's like, please. I said, oh, you see, you see, it works that way. Everybody a little bit, just a little bit will make this world such a better place. Yeah. Jules, uh, thank you so much for your time. My final question to you is after our listeners check out Murder Company, which I'm going to rec definitely recommend. I love it so much. What would you lead them to as far as from your own work, whether it's TV or movies that you feel is underrated that you would like our listeners and watchers to check out? And what makes this project so special for you? Thank you. Well, this 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 project is very special because it's completely personal to me. It, it's everything I ever want to portray and 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 do as an actor. It, it was very meaningful to me. My soul was so involved. Um, I love for people to watch this film. So maybe they can look at it and say, oh my God, we should not separate ourselves so much and we should not go to war. We should just be happy together because we bleed the same way. So um, making everybody understand that we should live in communities, it's really important because otherwise you end up doing things like that. Now, World War II was, let's not have it again and then the situation worldwide is a little bit edgy right now. And I feel this is a perfect time to tell people, hey, don't do that. Right. And very quickly, from your own body of work, from your past films, what would you recommend for us to check out after watching Murder Company? I, I will say, I, I will say it's, if you love lo family and drama, Brothers and Sisters, for sure, is one of these show that people should check it out because no matter who you are in the world, you're going to relate to it. I think that was one of the projects that I really loved. Well, thank you so much for your time again. Love Murder Company. Thank you. And you take care of take care of yourself. Thank you, Harrison. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for all this great question. I appreciate you, man.